Hello and welcome back to Football Daily, where we have a spicy one lined up for you today. An XI of players that the fans want to get rid of immediately. Let's get started. Goalkeeper, Andre Onana. As Apta Dead Fox pointed out on Twitter, Andre Onana isn't too popular with Ajax fans right now. After making 204 appearances for the club that picked him up following his spell at La Masia, the 18 cap Cameroonian's career came to a standstill in February 2021. Onana was found to have taken the prohibited substance furosemide and was handed a year-long ban by UEFA. However, the 6'3 stopper protested his innocence, claiming he had accidentally taken his wife's medicine, mistaking it for aspirin. The Court of Arbitration for Sport found that no significant fault could be attributed to Onana in June but only reduced his ban by three months, believing nine months away from the sport was proportional to the negligence committed. Selling Onana, still valued at £27 million by Transfermarkt, is complicated by the fact he can't return to first team action until November, two months before the Africa Cup of Nations starts. And if they can't shift him, Ajax risk losing the keeper who was linked with a £40 million transfer in the past for free when his contract expires in 2022. With Leon and Arsenal interested, Ajax's best hope is that a deal can be struck. Right back, Nako Williams. Liverpool fans are normally a pretty loyal and protective bunch around one of their own, but one thing they all seem to agree on is that Nico Williams isn't at the required level to represent Liverpool's first team at this time. Currently understudied to the world-class Trent Alexander-Arnold, who is only two years his senior, it's understandable that Williams has only been given 12 Premier League appearances in two years, six of which have been starts. But in his limited opportunities, Williams has shown himself to be off the pace, getting dribbled past 1.4 times per 90 last season, 0.6 more than any other defender in Klopp's squad. Whilst it's no surprise to see that Williams created less than half of Trent's chances per 90 last term, it's slightly shocking to learn that in his 249 league minutes, he's completed one pass into the penalty area, the same as Joel Matip and Reese Williams. For context, Trent completes 3 per 90. With funds at Liverpool tight this summer and a scarcity of fullback cover already at the club, it appears that Williams, who also struggled during Euro 2020, won't be able to secure the loan he needs. Centre back, Phil Jones. On the 8th of February 2019, three months into Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's spell as interim manager, Manchester United made the decision to hand Phil Jones a four year deal, with his previous one set to expire that summer. At the time, this didn't look crazy, with the former Blackburn star having completed the full 90 in eight of the club's previous 10 league games, nine of which they'd won. Illness and a small injury saw the defender miss nine games towards the end of that campaign, setting the tone for what was to follow. Harry Maguire was signed that summer for a world record fee for a defender and instantly became first choice. Then, despite only being unavailable for three games in 2019-20, five fewer than in any of his nine seasons at Old Trafford, Jones was only given 136 minutes of Premier League action. The club and player decided he should have surgery following the March 2020 lockdown and Jones hasn't played since, missing 75 games in total. Still just 29, we hope Jones can get back to his best, but with another centre-back potentially arriving this summer, it doesn't seem that that journey will be back at United. Centre-back, Samuel Ntiti. Why would Samuel Ntiti want to leave Barcelona? It's a question we at Football Daily have been asking for months. After all, it was the Blaugrana who decided to offer him a five-year contract worth a reported £212,000 per week back in June 2018, despite the centre-back having already missed 20 games with injury across his first two seasons with the club. Of course, the hierarchy wasn't to know what would happen next. Ten weeks on from lifting the World Cup with France, Umtiti was forced to get knee surgery on an issue that had been troubling him throughout the back end of the 2017-18 campaign. He's missed 63 games since, and been replaced first by Clement Longley, then Ronald Araujo, Oscar Mingueta and even Frankie de Jong in the centre-back pecking order. So much so that last season he only played 643 La Liga minutes, extraordinary for a player given a 500 million euro release clause. Barcelona desperately need to offload Umtiti and his monstrous wages, and are reportedly willing to let him leave for free. It's going to be a fascinating watch. Left back, Benjamin Mendy. Thanks to at tat underscore Tarsin for suggesting Benjamin Mendy on Twitter. Over the last six years, dating back to June 2015 and Raheem Sterling's arrival, Manchester City have signed nine players for over £50 million, two more than Manchester United in the same period. And while some of those signings such as Jao Cancelo and Rodri took a season to adapt, and Imeric Laporte is no longer in the starting eleven, none have been as big of a disappointment as Benjamin Mendy. The £52 million man from Monaco has had some horrendous luck. 
Four games into his Manchester City career, he ruptured his ACL against Palace and has missed an astonishing 125 games with various issues since. Four full seasons after joining, he has only made 49 Premier League appearances, 12 fewer than Zinchenko in the same period. Now 27 years old, Mendy's various layoffs have led to a drop in confidence. He only attempts 1.3 take-ons per 90, down from 3.8 in his final year in France and creates just 0.5 chances per 90, a 78% drop from four years ago. Reportedly paid £90,000 per week, Manchester City need to offload the Frenchman while he still holds some value. Centre mid, Mark Rocker. Fresh off the back of a dominant treble win, Bayern Munich fans went into the summer of 2020 expecting big things. Whilst the club managed to bring Leroy Sane back to Germany, the De Rorten faithful were disappointed to lose Thiago and only bring in Bounassar and Mark Rocher. 29-year-old Bounassar knew on arrival that he'd be competing with Benjamin Pavard and Joshua Kimmich, and no one was therefore surprised when he's played nothing more than a bit part role. But having showed a lot of promise in La Liga over the previous four seasons, big things were expected of Mark Rocker. But he was barely noticeable, only playing 91 league minutes before the start of March and only 175 by the end of the season, 21st in the German champion squad. Hansi Flick's departure this summer offered him a second chance only for him to be laid off for five weeks with an ankle injury in pre-season. Having produced 22 pressures per game and 6.5 passes into the final third per 90 during his final campaign in Barcelona, 1.3 more than Goretzka last term, Rocker is clearly talented. But we struggle to see him breaking into the first team pitcher anytime soon. Centre mid, Ross Barkley. The next step in Thomas Tuchel's short but incredibly successful reign as Chelsea boss has been moving on fringe stars like Fikayo Tomori and Mark Wehi. But a player most Chelsea fans would genuinely like to say goodbye to next is English midfielder Ross Barkley. The 27-year-old has never really found his feet at Stamford Bridge, starting just 26 league games since signing from Everton for £15 million in January 2018. His performances in West London have been characterised by numerous efforts on goal, peaking at 3.3 shots per 90 in 2019-20, but with minimal reward. He scored just once that campaign, resulting in a dismal return of 0.03 goals per shot. Last season, Barkley went on loan to Aston Villa in a bid to keep his England Euros hopes alive. But a hamstring injury in November threw Barkley off his tracks, with only one of his four goal involvements coming in 2021. While he does have undoubted quality, it's highly unlikely that will be on display at Stamford Bridge for much longer. Centre mid, Danny Ceballos. Next is the curious case of the talented yet unwanted Danny Ceballos. The young Spaniard broke onto the scene six years ago with Real Batiste, exhibiting a level of class and maturity in the midfield that triggered Real Madrid to pay £15 million for him in 2017. But Ceballos has never been a regular feature for Los Merengues, today only ever starting 17 league games for his new employers. A low move to Arsenal in 2019 was meant to provide a fresh start, though two years later it's still unclear what exactly the 24-year-old brings to the table. Sabaros made 49 Premier League appearances in North London, registering a modest 5 assists, yet never finding the net. On the face of it, 3.2 tackles and interceptions per 90 in 2019-20 looks impressive, but in reality it inflates the overall cover he offered his defence, as he was regularly bypassed by opposition dribblers. Arsenal have decided not to keep him, and it doesn't look like Madrid want him either. Ceballos has vowed to stay on at the Bernabeu and fight, but don't bet against Los Blancos, shifting him on at the first available opportunity. Right wing, Willian. Gunners fans must be wondering what on earth compelled the club's transfer chiefs to hand a 31-year-old Willian a lucrative three-year deal last summer. On a massive 190k per week, the former Chelsea star has never really shown what he can do after posting two assists on his debut away to a disappointing Fulham. By mid-February, he'd only contributed one more goal involvement to Mikel Arteta's faltering side, and the Corinthians Academy graduate would have to wait even longer to register his first league goal for the club, coming on the final day against an already relegated West Brom. Willian has been a shadow of a player who registered 16 goal involvements in 2019-20 for Chelsea, ranking second in the Premier League for progressive carries and fifth for shot-creating actions. In fact, last season his efforts on target plummeted to just 0.2 per 90 at the Emirates, while his key passes dropped to a six-year low. Arsenal's problem is that no one can afford to offer Willian the kind of wages he's on in North London, so whether they like it or not, they might be stuck for the Brazilian for a little while longer. Striker Mauro Icardi if one man knows how to rile up the fans, it's Mauro Icardi. In 2016, he threatened to fight the Inter Milan Ultras in his autobiography, which did not go down well in the San Siro. And in 2018, he was stripped of the Nerazzurri's captaincy after his wife and agent criticised then-manager Luciano Spalletti on Italian TV. 
These incidents prompted a lone move to PSG, where in fairness to the Argentine he actually impressed, scoring 12 league goals in 2019-20. That came from just over 1,200 league and minutes, resulting in a career best goal per 90 rate of 0.8. PSG were so pleased they forked out £45 million last summer to make the deal permanent. But after a fairly dismal campaign riddled with injuries that only delivered 13 goals in all competitions, his lowest return in 8 years, it's clear Icardi isn't wanted in the French capital anymore. The 28-year-old hasn't earned the same levels of hatred in France as he did back in Italy, but after Le Parisien's incredible work in the transfer market this summer, it's clear he's no longer considered a valued part of their project. Left wing, Vitolo. Atletico Madrid supporters have finally got their wish after Getafe took on their Spanish winger Vitolo on loan for next season. It simply hasn't worked out at all for the 31-year-old, who's never been the £32 million player Atletico were expecting when they pinched him from Sevilla back in 2017. Although three trophies have followed in 101 appearances for the Spanish club, he has collected as many yellow cards as he has goals, only finding the net seven times for Los Rojiblancos. Add to that various stints on the treatment table and it's clear to see why Diego Simeone was happy to let him leave. The fact that Tolo only received 295 minutes of La Liga action last term paints a picture of how far his star has fallen at the Wanda Metropolitano. Meanwhile, the club are willing to pay a significant chunk of his 190k per week wages to finalise his move to Getafe. And it's unlikely we will ever see Vitolo in an Atleti shirt again. With his contract set to finish in the summer of 2022, the Spanish champions can finally say goodbye to their expensive flop once and for all. So that was our XI of players. The fans want out immediately. Do you agree with our suggestions? Who have we missed out? Let us know down in the comments below. As always, make sure you're liked and subscribed to Football Daily with that notification bell switched on and we'll see you next time.